five, four, three, two. Realtors, you're in the right spot. We're going to do this together. Welcome to the Leading Edge Podcast. These mentors showed me a map of success. This is the place for real estate pros like you to get better at running your business, balancing your life, and having happy clients. Do you know how powerful you are? And now your host, Eric Thompson. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's your good friend, Eric Thompson, on the Leading Edge Podcast, episode number 92, called Being Afraid and Doing It Anyway. This one is going to be fun. Hey, speaking of fun, the Thompsons just got back from our spring break. You already know what we did. You can guess we went skiing because that's what we do like all the time. We went skiing, you guys, in one of my favorite places on planet Earth, which is southwest Colorado. We were in Durango. We were in Telluride, and have you ever been there before? Have you ever been down to Southwest Colorado, places like Durango and Telluride or Ure and Ridgeway and beautiful places like that? You guys, it is spectacular. There are some big mountains down there, some amazing views, some incredible skiing. We had so much fun. So I'm still just like buzzing after that. It was so fantastic. Loved it. So, so great. I so appreciate all of you being here and being engaged with this podcast. Something else that's really amazing for me, if you don't mind me sharing, is the fact over the last couple months, I've had more people join my membership than I've had joined since like the inception of it. Just, it's so fun. It's so cool. It's so great to meet these people and engage with them. Some really fantastic people have been joining my membership program. So that has been a blast. Okay. On with the show called Being Afraid and doing it anyway. So let me ask you this. Have you ever been afraid? Have you ever been (laughs) at least a little bit scared? Of course you have. You know why? Because you're a human being. So how does that show up in real estate? Like, have you ever been afraid to reach out to a client, like proactively reach out? Maybe it's a past client that you haven't talked to in a while, and you're afraid of maybe feeling a little awkward doing that. You're afraid of what they may say, how they may react. Have you ever been afraid to talk to a seller about their overpriced listing? because you're not sure how that's going to go. And that may be a little awkward to talk to them about. Have you ever been afraid or feeling a little bit scared to reach out to the broker on the other side of a transaction because you're in kind of a tough negotiation and you're worried that that may be a little contentious. You definitely don't like conflict. Have you ever felt scared about that? Right? Well, of course you have, right? Because again, you're only human. You're just a human being. That's why you feel scared. So I mentioned my membership earlier. One thing that we work on and one thing that I teach in my membership is how to do it anyway, even though you're afraid, right? That is a skill and that's something that we really focus on. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this as your coach, right? Let me put on my coaching hat. I'm going to ask you what sounds better coming from me as your coach, right? What sounds better? So one option for me coaching you, like there you are facing something that maybe you really don't want to do, maybe something that feels a little scary, feels a little awkward, afraid of a little conflict, or who knows what, you're just feeling a little afraid, what sounds better? Would it sound better for me to say things like, you know what, you need to just eliminate the fear, you need to remove the fear, you need to ignore the fear, you just need to overcome the fear, or... Does it sound better? Does it feel better? Does it seem more realistic for me as your coach to say, all right, look, here's the thing. You're going to feel scared, right? That's super natural. It's very normal for you to feel scared. What I want you to consider, what I would offer to you is what if you just did it anyway? Like what what if you went ahead, even though you're scared, like what if you could just feel scared in the moment? And what if you could do it anyway? And, And what if you could consider that that fear is going to be probably very short lived, right? And what what if you probably are going to make it through to the other side? Like, what if you're probably not going to die? All right. And I, I would say that with a big smile on my face. Like, what if you could feel that fear and just do it anyway? So what's better as, as a coach, me coaching you, what sounds better? Like what's better coaching strategy? What's better coaching dialogue? Again, me saying to you, you know what? Just eliminate the fear, remove the fear, ignore the fear, overcome the fear, or me coaching you to just say, Hey, you know what? You're going to feel scared. Totally normal. I want to, cons- I want you to consider to just do it anyway. And of course, number two is way better. And I'm hoping that's your answer, right? That you feel like number two is better. So that's the right approach. So how often are we bogged down in 
trying to eliminate fear, remove fear, ignore fear, ignore, uh, overcome fear. It's just not realistic. Okay. So we get scared for a reason. And that reason is a good reason. Actually, the reason is called survival. That's why we get scared. And as you probably already know, as you can, you've either already learned or you've just can sense that fear is like a super primitive feeling, right? That feeling goes back, right? That feeling's got some history in our ancestry, right? And it's served a very important purpose in that it's helped with our survival. So we can make a case, you can make a really strong argument that the reason why we're, we're hanging out today, like as a species called Homo sapiens is because of fear, right? Like fear has served a purpose, right? We needed to be afraid of the saber tooth tiger, for instance, okay? So that's just been around in our brain for a while, and it's going to stay in our brain for a while, you know, probably forever. Uh, it's going to stay in our brain for at least as long as we're going to be alive, you and I, right? So the thing is, you guys, it's just not realistic to try to eliminate or remove or ignore or even overcome it. It's not realistic, right? Because it's just there, all right? And it's also not useful to try to do that, right? So it's not realistic. It's also not useful. So one of my mentors, one person I follow, I think I've mentioned him before to you. His name is Dan Sullivan. What he likes to say is that a lot of us live our life waiting for the day and kind of looking forward to the day that we don't have to be courageous anymore. Like we say to ourselves, boy, wouldn't that be nice if we could stop having to be courageous? Well, that's a bummer. Like really, like if we think about a life where we don't have to exert any courage, that would be a pretty boring life, actually. Like it may sound good initially, but that would be super boring. Like a life where we're never having to flex our courage muscle would be a pretty boring life, right? And it's really a life where we start dying. It's, that's the moment where we, where we start dying. We start like shriveling up when we're not flexing our courage muscle, right? So it's not realistic. It's not useful. Another one of my mentors, an author I really like, and I heard him speak once back in the day, his name is David Cook. He's a sports psychologist. He has this great saying where he says, I purposely put myself into situations where I feel like I'm going to puke my guts out only then do I find out how good I really am. Isn't that amazing? I purposely put myself into situations where I feel like I'm going to puke my guts out. Only then do I find out how good I really am. Isn't that cool? Isn't that amazing? So that's when we find out how good we are. Like that's when we can really flex our courage muscle. That's when we grow and learn and expand and get better when we are afraid and we do it anyway. All right. So what are we afraid of? What are you afraid of, my friends? Well, you're afraid of three things. You're afraid of things that are unknown to you, right? So you're afraid of, of something that is just like completely foggy out in the future. You have no idea, have no clue where things are headed, where things are going. If you're not sure what kind of uh, lurks around the corner, oracle, right? That's scary. That's number one. Number two, you're afraid of things that would hurt you, okay? Uh, things that would physically hurt you or even emotionally hurt you. Like you're afraid of that because you don't like to feel hurt. You're also afraid of rejection, all right? And, and really what that is, that that's a fear of being alone, all right? So those are the three things you're afraid of. You're afraid of the unknown. You're afraid of things that would hurt you. You're afraid of rejection. And, and why are you afraid of those things? Let's start with because you're a human being, right? Because you're a very normal human being. So why are you afraid of the unknown? Well, that's because at our core, like, Many psychologists would, would argue the first need of every human being is a need for certainty, right? The need for certainty and clarity. So that's why you're afraid of things that are unknown to you. We, the brain hates things that are not known. The brain hates uncertainty. The brain cannot stand it. I made the point before about that's one reason why coronavirus was so impactful to society because there were so many unknowns, like we were just getting bombarded with uncertainty. Right now we're getting bombarded with uncertainty in the economy, the banking system, interest rates, right? That's really hard for our brain. Our brains do not like uncertainty, right? So that's why we don't like uncertainty because that's just at our core. We need, uh, we need clarity, we need certainty that gives us confidence to move forward. 
The reason why we're afraid of getting hurt is because, well, duh, because it hurts. <laughs> I think that one's pretty easy. The reason why we're afraid of getting hurt is because it hurts. But what we confuse that, what we sometimes confuse is physical hurt with emotional hurt, right? So it makes sense to be afraid of a saber toothed tiger because uh, it could kill us, right? Like physical hurt is a real thing, but sometimes we confuse physical hurt with emotional hurt and we, like we attach it, right? So we attach emotional hurt to the same hurt that a saber toothed tiger would inflict on us, but it's not the same because we get over emotional hurt quickly. At least we can. We're afraid of rejection. This gets really interesting. The reason why we're afraid of rejection is because we are afraid of being alone. All right. And you know why we're afraid of being alone? Because being in groups has been really important to our, what? To our survival, to our survival as a species. The reason why we have uh, like um, uh, been around as a species, right? Why we've been prolific as a species is because we like to hang together, right? We're, we're better in a group. And so when you get rejected, what that feels like is now you're alone and being alone is super scary because when you're alone, and this is now going back to our primitive, like saber tooth tiger kind of brain, when we're alone, we're afraid of being left out, like being left tribe. And that makes us more susceptible to not surviving. Like we're, you, the odds of you dying way back in the day <laughs> uh, go up if you're alone. Okay, so that that's why that lives in our in our brain. Those are the reasons why we're afraid of the unknown, afraid of being hurt, and afraid of being rejected. So, how does this show up in real estate, right? So, how does this show up for you in real estate? Let's just use the example of you have a seller that's overpriced. All right, you have a seller that's overpriced. You're feeling afraid, so. Like all three of these things are are in play. So a reason why you're going to hold back from reaching out to that seller, the reason why you're going to procrastinate on communicating with that seller and talking to that seller about their overpriced listing and saying, yo, the listing's overpriced. we got to do something. The reason why you don't want to do that is because you're scared. So you're scared of the unknown. You don't know how they're going to react. All right. So you're saying, oh my gosh, I don't know how they're going to take this. That's scary. Uh, you're afraid of them saying something that would hurt you, all right? You're afraid of them saying something like, well, what are you talking about? What do you mean? I wish you would have told me before. Or um, I don't think that you're saying this. Or um, no, I disagree, right? So all those things would hurt. You're also afraid of rejection of them saying something like, oh my God, I don't want to work with you anymore. I don't like you. I'm rejecting you. I don't like you anymore. So uh, go away, get out of my life. <laughs> like that's what your brain is telling you is that there's all these unknowns and it may hurt and you may get rejected. So check it out. Imagine in that scenario, we have a seller that's overpriced and we need to talk to them about their overpriced listing. Like we got to, we have to have the conversation in order to help them get the result that they want, which is selling their house. Like we, we need to talk to them about it. So imagine if we know we need to do it, but we're just kind of waiting. If we're waiting for the fear to go away, <laughs> okay, if we're waiting on, okay, well, at some point, I won't feel scared about this anymore, so I'm just going to wait. Or imagine that we say to ourselves, okay, I'm feeling scared, but I'm, you know what, I'm just going to try to get it out of my brain. I'm going to try to remove the fear. I'm going to just ignore it. I'm going to uh, eliminate it, I'm just, or I'm just going to overcome, I'm going to overcome this fear. Like, it's not realistic. It's not going to happen, all right? It's like we're arguing with gravity, okay? We can't argue with gravity. Like gravity is gravity. Like gravity is there. Fear is there. It's not going to go away. So what if instead, in that moment, in that situation where we have the overpriced seller that we need to talk to, what if we said to ourselves instead, like you, you coaching yourself, what if you said, all right, here's the thing. <clears throat> this is not going to be pleasant. I know that. Like, in it, And I'm feeling a little apprehensive about that. And you know what? The reason why I'm feeling that is because I'm human. It's so normal. It's super normal for me to feel scared. All right. And I know I'm just going to feel scared. And I also know that it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to flex my courage muscle. And here's the thing I really know. This can be short lived. It's going to not be pleasant. It's not going to be enjoyable, but probably I'm making it out of my head to be worse than it's really going to be. And you know what? As I really think about it, it's not going to last that long. Like the worst part of it is probably like, 10 seconds, 15 seconds when I get those words out of my mouth. That's probably the worst part. 
And you know what? I'm making this up to be full of a bunch of unknowns, but actually they're only one of a few things that could happen. Like when I really think it through, they're only one of a few things that could happen. All right. And, and I'd be prepared for any of those. And they may say something that, that will kind of sting or may hurt, but that's going to be short lived. And it's probably not going to sting as much as I'm making it out to be. And my gosh, worst, worst case, they say that they're done with me and they're going to reject me and not don't want to work with me anymore. It's not the end of the world. It's not gonna, like I'm going to be completely alone. Like I got plenty of people still around me and still, still have my back. So you know what? I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. And I know I'm going to be scared. I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to dial those digits and I'm going to feel a little apprehensive. Like probably my palms are going to sweat a little bit. My heart's going to pick up a little bit, my heart rate. <clears throat> and, um, and, uh, you know, my brain is going to be kind of electrified <laughs> with, with some, with some fear, but I'm going to, I'm going to just do this anyway. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to live through this. I know it, it's just going to be short lived and I know I'm going to get to the other side. I mean, my gosh, it's not, not like I'm going to die. Like my brain, at least part of my brain, like my old primitive brain is probably telling me like, you're going to die. Well, you know, I'm not going to die <laughs> doing this. Right. So of course I like played that up and exaggerated just to make the point. But the point is you got this. Like the point is you can do this. Like the point is you can practice this being afraid and doing it, doing it anyway. And the more you do it, the better you get, right? It's just like a muscle, right? It's just like working out, just like a muscle, like flex your muscle, um, work out your muscle of being afraid and doing it anyway, right? Repeat, be afraid, do it anyway, repeat. You get better at it. And you're like, dang, that wasn't so bad. I mean, it wasn't awesome. It was, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't like welcome it necessarily, but it wasn't that bad and check it out. I didn't die. I made, I made it through. It wasn't that bad. So let me ask you this. What's the thing? What's the thing sitting there that you need to do? All right. What's the conversation that you need to have? Who's the person that needs to hear from you? What's the thing that you need to buckle down and do that you're feeling a little scared of, or maybe a lot scared of, and that's causing you not to do it. And have you been waiting for that fear to go away? And do you see that that's just not going to happen, right? Uh, not realistic. Is it something unknown? Is it something you you are worried is going to hurt you? Are you worried about being rejected, right? So now you understand how all this works. You understand kind of the moving parts and pieces, the mechanics, and you understand that you can be afraid and do it anyway, right? Both of those things can happen at the same time. And you got this, my friends, you so got this. All right, you guys, thank you as always, for being a part of this podcast, for tuning in. I so appreciate it. I'm getting, uh, it's so fun to look at all the downloads I'm getting. It's really cool. So I appreciate all of you. I want all of you to have an amazing day. I look forward to seeing you in the next podcast. And in the meantime, enjoy life on the leading edge. Bye.